There are many people who believe that this present conflict is really about oil. And I wonder if you could say something about how you see the enormous oil reserves of Iraq being developed first for the benefit of the people of Iraq and secondly to meet the needs of mankind. When we speak about oil in this part of the world, we are an integral part of the world. We have to deal with others in all aspects of life, economic, as well as social, technical, scientific, and other areas. It seems that the authorities in the United States are motivated by aggression that has been evident for more than a decade against the region. The first factor is the role of those influential people in the decision taken by the President of the United States of America based on sympathy with the Zionist entity that was created at the expense of Palestine and its people and their humanity. These people force the hand of the American administration by claiming that the Arabs pose a danger to Israel without remembering their obligation to God and how the Palestinian people were driven out of their homeland. The consecutive American administrations were led down a path of hostility against the people of this region, including our own nation, and we are part of the Arab nation. Those people and others have been telling the various United States administrations, especially the current one, that if you want to control the world, you need to control the oil. Therefore, the destruction of Iraq is a prerequisite to controlling oil. That means the destruction of the Iraqi national identity since the Iraqis are committed to their principles and rights according to international law and the United Nations Charter. It seems that this argument has appealed to some United States administrations, especially the current one, that if they control the oil in the Middle East, they would be able to control the world. They could dictate to China the size of its economic growth and interfere in its education system. And could do the same to France and Germany and perhaps to Russia and Japan. They might even tell the same to Britain, 
If its oil doesn't satisfy its domestic consumption, it seems to me that this hostility is a trademark of the current United States administration and is based on its wish to control the world and spread its hegemony. People have the right to say that if this aggression by the American administration continues, it would lead to widespread enmity and resistance. We won't be able to develop the oil fields or the oil industry and therefore create worldwide cooperation as members of the human family when there is war, destruction and death. Isn't it reasonable to question this approach and conclude that this road will not benefit anyone, including America or its people. It may serve some short-term interests or the interests of some influential powers in the United States, but we can't claim that it serves the interests of the American people in the long run or the interests of other nations. There are tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people in America, in Britain, in Europe and worldwide who want to see a peaceful outcome to this problem. And they are the real Americans, in my opinion, the real British, the real French, the real Germans, because they think of the world in terms of their children. I have ten grandchildren. And in my family, there is English, Scottish, American, French, Irish, Jewish, Indian, Muslim blood. And for me, politics is about their future, their survival. And I wondered whether you would say something yourself, direct, through this interview, to the peace movement in the world that might uh, help to advance the cause that they have in mind. Well, First of all, we admire the development of the peace movement around the world in the last few years. We pray to God to empower all those working against war and for the cause of peace and security, based on just peace for all. And through you, we say to the British people that Iraqis do not hate the British people. Before 1991, Iraq and Britain had a normal relationship as well as a normal relationship with America. At that time, the British government had no reason to criticize Iraq, as we hear some voices doing these days. We hope the British people would tell those who hate the Iraqis and wish them harm that there is no reason to justify this war. And please tell them that I say to you, because the British people are brave. Tell them that the Iraqis are brave too. Tell the British people if the Iraqis are subjected to aggression or humiliation, they would fight bravely, just as the British people did in the Second World War. We will defend our country as they defended their country, each in their own way. The Iraqis don't wish war, 
but if war is imposed upon them, if they are attacked and insulted, they will defend themselves. They will defend their country, their sovereignty, and their security.